Hey fourth graders, so for today's system we're going to keep talking about using the metric system when measuring, but more specifically today we're going to talk about measuring weight or mass using the metric system. The metric system, remember, is a um, unit that most of the world uses, especially in math and science because it's very precise. We're not used to using this in the United States. We usually use the customary units, but today we're talking about the metric system. So metric units to measure length, weight, and capacity. These are all different things that we can um, measure or weigh, and they have different um, metric units or names to go with them. So if you look like down here, we have our base units. If we're going to talk about measuring length or distance, we're going to be talking about the meter. If you're going to talk about weighing um, like someone's weight or mass, we're going to use the base unit gram. And then to measure liquid volume or capacity, we're going to use the base unit liter. So here we have the chart if we're measuring distance, we're going to talk about meter. If you notice that all of our base words like kilo, deci, centi, milli, they're all the same. It's just we added the base word meter on there because we're talking about distance. Here if we are measuring liquid volume, again, our base words like kilo and deci, centi, milli, those are all the same, but we have added the base word liter because we're talking about liquid volume. <clears throat> and then we have weight or mass. Our uh, words are still the same, kilo, deci, centi, milli, but we put the word base word gram at the end because we're talking about measuring weight or mass. And we're going to focus on the weight and mass today. So our base unit today is always going to be the gram. So metric system review. So we're going to talk about mainly these four. Um, hecto, deco, and deci, we don't really we don't use a lot, so we're not going to focus on that. We're going to talk about the kilo, the base unit for since it's um, weight, we're going to talk about grams, and then centis and milligrams. Now remember, kilo is going to be bigger than a gram, and then the centigram and milligram are going to be smaller than our base unit gram. So how do you get convert between smaller units and bigger units? So this is something I noticed you're having trouble with when I'm looking at your exit tickets. So let's go ahead and how would I convert five kilograms to grams? So how many, how much is five kilograms? How many grams would that be? Well, here's a nice chart. It's kind of confusing, but I'll walk you through it. We have to remember that the really, the focus for our is right here. If we're going from bigger units to smaller units, you're always going to multiply. And down here, if we're going to smaller units to bigger units, we're going to divide. So we're going from kilograms to grams. That means we're going from bigger to smaller. So we're going to multiply. Now kilo means a thousand. So we're going to take our number and we're going to multiply it by a thousand. So that means five kilograms times 1,000 will get us 5,000 grams. So our answer here would be 5,000 grams. Let's do another one. How would you convert 250 kilograms to milligrams? Here we have our conversion chart. So what do you think? Are we going from bigger to smaller or smaller to bigger? Well, we're going from kilograms all the way to grams, and then we're going to end up at milligrams. So we're going from bigger units to smaller units. So we're going to multiply. Remember, kilo means 1,000 grams. So we're going to take our number, which is 250, and we're going to keep multiplying it by 1,000. So since we're going from kilograms to grams, we're going to take 250, multiply it by 1,000, and we get 250,000. But that only lands us right here. We have to get all the way to the milligrams. So we have to go move on, and we know that 1 gram equals 1,000 milligrams. 
So we're going to take this number and we're going to multiply it by another 1,000. And we're going to end up with 250 milli, million milligrams. An easier way to think of that is we're going to think about 250. So we started with 250 and we started with kilograms and we moved all the way over here to milligrams. Well, how many um, places did you jump? Well, we would jump to one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to have 250, and we're just going to add six zeros on the end because we are getting, we are um, multiplying 10 times greater each time. So just remember, you can go from going, you can just add six zeros on the end of your 250. So let's convert 450 milligrams to grams. So what are we doing here? Are we going from bigger to smaller or smaller to greater? Here we have the chart. We're going from milligrams to grams. So we're going from smaller to bigger. So we're going to be dividing this time. Remember, milli means a thousandth. So one gram equals 1,000 milligrams. So we're going to take 450 and we're going to divide it by 1,000. So 450 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.45. So we ended up with an amount that is smaller than a gram. So it's 45 hundredths of a gram. So 450, if we wrote it as a whole number, an easy way to do this, if we wrote 450 as a decimal, it would look like this. We're going to take our decimal and we're going to move it how many places to the left? Well, we went from milli to dec or milli to grams, so we're going to go one, two, three. So we're going to move our decimal three places to the left. And we come up with 0 0.45. So this one's a little tricky. It's going to take some time. Um, for this assignment, I would say if you have to use division, use the calculator. And so like if you were using the number 650 and you had to divide it by 1,000, you could use a calculator and see what decimal you would end up with.